you got to have a go at making one of these. The construction to this chair is really simple. It's made up of two sides and slats going across to form your seat. The most awkward part is the first part. It's drawing the curves and the shape to the side of the chair profile. Now this is awkward because how do you know if it's comfortable until it's actually cut and put all together and you actually sit on it? Well, a way around this is to steal the dimensions from an existing chair that you already find comfortable. Get a measurement for the size of the seat, the height of the backrest, how high off the floor it is. All these measurements really help you to figure out what kind of chair sizes and dimensions will fit for your chair. Another way that you can do it is to actually take the chair itself, lay it down on its side onto a piece of plywood and then trace around the existing chair. Once you've got those key lines for where the seat is and where the backrest is, you can then make all the curves you like to make it look fancy and to add a bit of a rocker on the bottom. So as you can see, when you're sitting in this chair, really your center of gravity is going to be coming down in this direction so all your weight is going to be there if you start leaning back you're going to get the rocking chair effect and you have a bit of a rock because i've got the curve so to prevent the chair going too far backwards i want to make sure that the curve on the backrest comes out more than it really needs to that way if you start over tipping it'll hit that bump and it should prevent it from going too far so i'm going to bring this much further out than i've already got it So now I'm pretty happy with this shape, I'm gonna get it cut out with a jigsaw. I'm just gonna take my time nice and slow, not worrying too much to hit my lines. You will find that the jigsaw will guide you. It'll naturally wanna to cut to a certain curve and sometimes that can work really well. So I'll just take your time with it, get it cut out and then we'll have a look what the shape's like once it's fully cut out of this board. This is just 18 millimeter plywood. The second one, it's just the case of putting my first shape on, tracing around it and cutting it out with the jigsaw in exactly the same way. Right, I've had to pop the gazebo up because this weather just can't make its mind up. The sun's out at the minute, but it was tipping it down earlier. I did luckily manage to get the other piece cut though. So I've got two pieces that are pretty much identical. They've got that same curve to it. And what I've also done, I've gone ahead and I've marked a bit of a guideline just so I can make sure that they're aligned properly. I'm gonna be using three pieces to connect it at the back. Now the pieces I'll be using to join it together at the back, then 45 millimeters wide by 20 millimeters thick. And these are 50 centimeters long as well. So these can get attached now to the back, first drilling pilot holes and then securing them in place with screws. And I can use those guidelines that I've marked to make sure the two sides are remaining parallel. So now I can add glue to the top of these, get the other side piece put on top, make sure it's lined up with my guidelines, drill the pilot holes, add the screws, and we should be ready to start putting the actual laths on next. It's actually starting to take shape now. What is a good sign at this stage is the fact that it is naturally falling where I thought the centre of gravity would be. So this arrow that I drew on earlier, this is where basically your backside will be. So all your weight will be going into this curve, which is dead centre on this. So if you do want to rock back, you can, but there is this big bulge at the back to try and prevent you from tipping too far. And to get onto it, you can see it's a little bit of an awkward one, but you can easily press some weight down, sit on, and then rock back into your chair and you've got a nice recliner. That's the plan anyway. We won't really know until those laths are on and I can actually sit in it to try it. So what I've got here are 24 pieces cut to 60 centimetres long. This is the same wood that I used for the three pieces on the back to join the sides together. This will give me a bit of an overhang either side. I think it'll look really nice and it'll give you somewhere to hold your fingers as well, which is always helpful. And I need to drill pilot holes one in each side. So as you can see, I've got a lot to go through. So to help me along, I've made a bit of a template. Now this is the same material, just an offcut, and I've measured and marked a hole. So I can offer this up to the edge of each of the boards and then drill through and I know it'll be in exactly the right spot. I'll have two pilot holes in each piece 
So that's going to be 48 holes I need to drill. And then we can get them attached to the chair with screws and see how it actually feels to sit on. So with all those pilot holes drilled now, it really is just the case of attaching them to the chair itself. I've got my guidelines to start me off. I am going to have a little bit of a gap between each one, so they will be staggered working the way down. I need to make sure that I've got an even overhang either side, so I have cut a couple of scrap blocks as well. I'll be able to offer those up to the edge and make sure that they're flush, and that way I know that the overhang is even on both sides. I can then put a screw through each side and work my way down the chair. I actually only ended up using 18. I didn't need the full 24, but at least I had them just in case I did need them. Now the moment of truth is to try it and see if it's actually comfortable and to make sure that I don't fully tip back. Well, I like how you can tip it forward to sit on. I was a bit worried about that. Seems okay. Try and give it a bit of a, a push back. I can't see that going over unless you really wanted to force yourself back. That's pretty comfortable, that is, as well. Now, trying to get up, how awkward is it? As you can see, I'm only a little one. My feet doesn't, don't exactly touch the floor. If I sat a bit further forward, the might. Yeah, I can touch about there. So if I want to get up, I should be able to lean my weight forward. Chair tilts. I can stand up. That's all right, that is. So now the next step, believe it or not, is to actually take these off. When I take them off, I'll be able to sand them all nice and smooth, remove the rough edges and add some furniture wax. While wax is applied to these, I'll also be able to paint the sides. I've got the screws on the sides as well that I want to replace for dowels. It'll look better and it'll be a lot stronger. So I do think it's worth it. If you wanted to skip this step, you could sand these in place and add wax and everything. It's just a lot more awkward, I think. So that's what I'm going to be doing now. Right, so while that paint's drying, I've gone ahead and got all these slats sanded and now I can get them waxed. And with all of these waxed now, I can just apply them to the seat again with the same screws that I took out before. Luckily, all the holes are already in place, so it's just a case of matching them up. Now I have actually designed this to be an indoor chair, but looking at it in the house, it just doesn't do it justice. So I've got it out here so you get a better view of it. But if you did want to make it to be an outside chair that you could leave out in all the elements, perhaps use marine ply, it's better suited for outside, use a garden paint, and of course protect this wood with something like a yacht varnish or any other kind of outdoor waterproof finish. But this can still be used outside. We're gonna probably have this in the conservatory, to be honest with you. So when we have nice dry weather, we can always bring it outside, sit on it, use it. And if the weather changes like it is at the moment, we can always take it back in the house and it'll keep it nice and dry. It is all right, you know, I'm well chuffed with it. To be honest, it's one of those projects where it is really simple to put it together. It's two sides and some slats going across to form the seat. But the really worrying part is drawing that curve and the fact that you don't know it's going to be comfortable until you actually put it together. But it can always be tweaked, so I really hope that you do give it a go. It's really enjoyable to do. Cut a couple of nice shapes, add some slats, sit on it. Is it comfy? Brilliant. Is it not? Make some changes, cut the curves a bit deeper. With all different shapes and sizes, so no one chair is going to be a perfect fit for everyone. So just tweak it to best suit your needs. I do really hope that you like this video and I hope that it's inspired you. If you give it a go for yourself, please post the photos on social media and be sure to tag on a budget in it because we absolutely love to see what you get up to. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, make sure you click the subscribe button and click the little bell icon next to it. That way you'll get a notification as soon as you upload a new video. Thank you all for watching.